Sure, most of us use Google Ads to get more sales or leads. But what if you want to use Google Ads to get more foot traffic into your physical location? Well, that is possible and we can review this information with the store visits report. In this video, we will first talk about what store visits conversions are, how they are tracked by Google, and how you can set them up within your account. Then we'll go over the requirements needed in order to track store visit conversions. Then we'll look at the store visits report so you get an understanding of what information can be viewed to really assess if Google Ads is impacting foot traffic for your business. You probably want me to jump right into the store report, and I could do that, but I don't think that's the best way to explain how it works because the report is really not possible unless you can confirm you have store visit conversion tracking set up and working. In order to do that, in your account, go to your goals section, expand conversions, and then just look at your summary. Depending on how many goal categories you are using in your account, you may have to scroll down a little bit, but here we have store visits. It's a separate section within our account. This is just our demo account, so that's why we see nothing here in terms of tracking. Later on, we'll hop into an actual account when we look at the store report so you get actual information of what you could see. If you're new to this section, let me take some time to explain what store visit conversions are and how they work. I first want to start with how do store visit goals work? In order for this to work, a user who clicks on your ad has to be logged into their Google account and they must have location history turned on or enabled in their account settings. I know on the slide right here, I do say click on your ad, but it could be more than just clicks. They could watch a video ad. They could see a display ad. So some view-based or interaction-based engagements will still apply than more than just clicks, as long as that user is logged in when they're engaging with your ad. Then the user has to visit your store's physical location. How close do they have to be to consider it an actual visit to your store location? That's a great question. Here's where it gets a little tricky. Due to privacy policies, the store visits are anonymous. So Google uses aggregated statistics and what Google actually quotes is that they extrapolate the data to represent a broader population of your customers. Many of the visits are verified with Google surveys, and then based on the responses, Google finds a decent percentage of the locations that they visited, and then uses AI to mix it with predicted visits. So already, I think we need to take these numbers with some grain of salt, because yes, there's GPS, and Google has pretty good tracking of your location, but what if someone just walks by your store and doesn't actually go in? Can we fully prove that? Is Google gonna count it? They're pretty quiet on that. Even when I've been in conferences and people have flat out asked them these types of questions. And when you're aggregating results, like some ad platforms are doing with conversion counts when they can't fully get the numbers anymore, the numbers could be close, but we know they're not gonna be exact. Now let's look at store location goal eligibility requirements. The first is that your store or physical location must be in an eligible country. There are a little over two dozen available. I'll have the link in the video description to see if you're in an eligible country. Next, you have to be an appropriate location. It cannot be healthcare, religion, anything with kids, or any other business that Google considers to be sensitive in nature. Next, your ads must use location or affiliate location assets. If you're not familiar with affiliate location assets, we made a video about them. You can watch it right here. If you're not familiar with affiliate location assets, I'll explain briefly. These are what you use if you don't have a physical location, but you sell your products at other stores or other locations. You'll see in our demo account. And since Google is using aggregated statistics, the more locations you have attached to your account, the faster you're going to see store visit conversions start appearing within your account, and it increases the likelihood that you'll have enough data. The more locations you have, the better chance you'll see more and accurate store visit numbers within your account. Now, just because you have the assets within your account doesn't mean you're fully done. You should make sure that your location or affiliate location assets are active. There's no issue with the connection of them between potentially your business profile and your Google Ads account, and they have to be attached to your campaign somehow. If you set up assets at the campaign or ad group level, you're fine. You just want to make sure that you have them at every campaign and ad group that is running. But we have accounts where they are set up at the account level too, and the reporting still works. And as I kind of mentioned already, volume is the key. This goes beyond the number of people who may visit your store. It's also the number of impressions, clicks, or engagement of people seeing your ad. So if you're running a bunch of low volume search campaigns and you're wondering how come you're not seeing store visit information for those campaigns, well, due to privacy reasons, you might not see any store visit numbers. Also, there's AI and machine learning that's part of pulling these aggregated stats together. And when you have those elements involved, it needs a good amount of data in order to report something as accurate as possible. So if you do meet all the requirements that I talked about on the last slide, what will happen? Well, in the section we looked at within Google Ads, your store visits will automatically start to report. 
To a certain extent, it can't retroactively report numbers. For example, if it took you a little bit of time to set up your location or affiliate location assets, you're not going to get numbers until before that step was completed. Your store visit conversions will be added to the All Conversions column. These are essentially secondary conversion actions. We do have a video about the All Conversions column. You can check that one out here if you want better explanation. Now, if you're running display or video campaigns, store visit conversions will be part of the view through conversions column. One last thing, store visit conversions are available for the search network, display network, and YouTube network. And all the requirements we talked about apply to all of the networks. However, eligibility is separated per network. So it's possible to get store visit information for, let's say just the search network, but maybe not the YouTube network if you're not doing enough advertising there. And in case you were asking, you can see store visit information for Performance Max campaigns since it uses those three networks. I'll talk a little bit more about Performance Max later. If you go ahead and click on the store visits conversion action, you can see that store visits are considered a primary action. Let me click on edit settings and you will also see right away that I cannot change this action optimization. So it's going to live as a primary conversion action. I cannot change it to secondary. That may change the way that you review your conversion actions when segmented within Google Ads, but it's always good to be aware of this. But now let's actually go into the store visits report. In the new interface, I'm going to click on campaigns, and then it now lives under insights and reports. And there we see the section for stores. Okay, as I move away, here are the locations we added in the affiliate location asset video. By default, you should see these five columns. First, you have local reach. This is the number of time your store's location-based ad was shown. Here we see the store visits, probably the column you wanted to see, the number of times people visited a store. Then we have call clicks, the number of times people hit the call button while your ad was visible. If you want more information about whether the user connected or how long the call was, you'll have to go to the actual call reporting section. This is literally just the tap on your call asset. How many times someone clicked on the driving directions button, again, another location-based ad, and then website visits. Clicked on the ad, went to your website or landing page. Now these are just the default five columns, but you can go up to the columns button here. And here's where you can add other engagements. Here we see the view through versions of it for your YouTube and display campaigns. Go ahead and add those if you wanna see how that is involved with some of your other campaign types. But we also see options for menu and orders. I have never worked with any restaurant or fast food type clients, so can't explain how those are tracked. Gonna cancel for now. But then if you go up to segment, your only option is going to be time by day, week, month, quarter, year, or day of the week. Now this is the new interface, but we still have plenty of clients who for some reason, even though they spend a lot of money, haven't even been offered the new interface yet. Let me hop into one of those accounts. And there we see the same five columns, have to blur out the actual store locations because they're not using affiliate assets, these are their stores. But in the older interface, we have to click on locations in the navigation, and then it's the per store report. For this particular client, they don't want phone calls, so we don't have that enabled in any campaign. It's not even set up at the account level completely removed. So we have zero call clicks there. But since we have actual location assets set up, we are eligible to have local based ads. That's also another reason why you may see ads on Google Maps. And people have the options to find directions, still click on our search ads, and there's local reach. Now for the last part, I'm going to hop back into our demo account. And then we're going to create a new campaign. That's because I want to show you within the new interface. You may notice that there is a campaign objective for local store visits and promotions. And when we click on it, Performance Max is the only option. These used to be the old local campaigns. Google is letting us know in the blue bar. The main goal for this campaign is to drive more foot traffic, have more people call your business, or have more people try to find your business with driving directions to possibly head there immediately. We used to be able to run local campaigns just on search. For some of our clients, they worked very well. So switching to this format, we've seen mixed results. But if you're not in the service industry and you can't run local service ads, this really is the best option in Google if you want to try to drive more foot traffic and prove it. So I'm not going to actually walk through this whole campaign setup. There's no need to. It's a performance max campaign. But do note, if store visits is your goal, there is a campaign objective for you. Hopefully this gives you a better understanding of the store visit report and how Google tracks store visit conversions. If you have any other questions about the report or why you may or may not be seeing store visits within your account, please let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, 
You can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.